so before i start the video today you know quick video i'm going to continue with what we learned a, a little bit about uh you know these uh, pearl divers and uh, how they were using american indigenous people as slaves you know not anybody coming in from africa at all uh in regards to the story we were telling yesterday about the lucayans and all that and the caribs who were being uh, used for that um again I want to remind everybody these are some colorized pictures I did, and some other pictures, just so we can get a perspective when we're talking about Caribs. Who we're talking about? It says here, Kalinago Carib family from Sandy Bay, St. Vincent, all right? From St. Vincent, Captain George, his wife, and kids, all right? Let's zoom in a little bit so you guys can see clearly, all right? Can you see clearly? All right, from St. Vincent, Caribs, right? Now we got this Carib woman, it says here, from Dominica. The island of Dominica. All right. You got some other, uh, an indigenous couple from Suriname. You know, I wanted to show them. I don't want to, you know, get copyrighted or <laughs> taken down by YouTube because they're, you know, they're showing a little bit more. But, uh, you know, that's what they look like. These are from Suriname. Of course, there's different phenotypes there as well, different hair types in Suriname, you know, but this is just some examples. And uh, these are Caribs from it says indios caribes or carib indians from venezuela venezuela we're going to be well remember margarita island and cubagua and all that that was in the off the coast of venezuela they were using the uh, native population and bringing in lucayans to uh die for pearls and for other things and from there uh shipping them out to other parts of uh the caribbean and this is some of the uh Images. I, I. This is one image I found of uh, some carriers from Venezuela. You know, as you can see here. And this is another image right here. It says Carib Carib group of Arawak people in Sermo. So Carib group of Arawak. So it's a mixture of probably Arawaks and Caribs together. All right, as you can see. This is. Let me see. 
in the uh, Garden of the Palms next to the Dutch governor house in Paramaribo, Suriname, all right? Also in Suriname, all right? Indigenous inhabitants. And I just want you to see the governor in the back right here, the Dutch governor, he's also a brother. You see that? This is the Dutch governor standing right behind him. Yeah, the, <laughs> the brother right there. You see, so just want to show that. And of course, everybody's seen these before. Two carried men show the coat of arms of Suriname. All right, we got this colorized too. Another example here, Caribbean woman from Belize, all right? Belize, so the Caribs and the Arawaks were actually all over Central America. The only difference in Central America is that they were mixing with some of the Northern uh, tribes coming down, you know, from Mexico and Northern US and from the Southern, uh, you know, or South America since they were in the middle. All right, now who show old man it says here, but uh, the Carib woman, as you can see, from um, 1878, we got another, a picture here let me just zoom in all right these people right here as you can see it says caribs at home preparing cassava according to the primitive methods of saint vincent more caribs from saint vincent primitive methods uh -huh. caribs at home it says see print number 1422 this is a colorized version this was in black and white as you can see caribs right caribs and more says Carib Indian making baskets in the island of Dominica. All right, making baskets in the island of Dominica. Let me zoom in a little bit just for you guys so you guys can get a clear perspective. You guys can get a clear perspective. All right, you see? Again, this is from my colorized picture series. A lot of people say I'm just showing Mongols. You know, I don't know what they mean. They're calling these people Mongol. They're calling these people Mongol. They say, Kurimeo, you only showing Mongols. All right, so I don't know what they mean. All right, some drawings, of course, we've seen these of uh, Carib Indians, you know, Familia India Caraiba. All right, and again, just today's video, just remember who was driving for the pearls, how they were being described, how they were being called slaves, where they were American uh, indigenous people, many of them from the Bahamas being brought down to Margarita with the local population too, that they reduced, so they had to bring in the Lucayans. I remember that. Who was in charge of all that? Who was making sure this was all happening? Charles V, remember? Charles V. Or Carlos V. As it says here right in the right, see in the bottom it says Carlos V. That's from an old painting from Peru. It's in the Lima, in the Larco Museum in Lima, Peru. And right next to him is the Inca kings. All right? And they're also the same complexion as him. All right? So Carlos V, which is in Spanish, Charles V. Carlos V, all right? This is him over here too with his regalia, his Vatican Holy Roman Emperor regalia. This is not slave clothing. This is how you know it's him. These emblems, historians know what this means. You know, they just keep it in the hush. Ain't no servant or the saying, uh, son Maurice, you know, that's they try to say all these, uh, what they would say, Moorish looking Europeans are all the same Saint Maurice or you know the one of the three wise kings you know it's always the same story but we know how to dodge the hijack we know uh, Carlos Quinto was the swarthy man Carlos Quinto we're gonna hear today what he was doing what else he was doing to the American indigenous people here all right a more on more war yeah it's deep like that it's deep like that. It wasn't just about white people. All right. So again, and we're also trying to correct history regarding who was really being put under slavery. Um, you know, I've done many videos. Um, as you know, we know there was black conquistadors. This is from my video, Columbus and his Negro friends. All right. Make sure to go back two, three years back from there or four years ago. I don't even remember how long ago. But uh, we know that there was so-called black conquistadors. But there was a lot more than they're telling us that they admit because a lot of these Sephardic and Moorish pirates and all that were people of color as well. You know, as we know, we've been able to prove in that, right? Crypto Jewish pirates of the Caribbean, right? So when we're talking about pirates, filibusters, buccaneers, and all these people helping also in the uh, so-called slave trade here in the Americas, right? Amongst the uh, in indigenous population, you know, we know these are all Swarthy uh, people, mostly back then in colonial times. Yeah, I guess that deep. Just want to remind you, you know, we just did a video recently about the uh, Pequits, right? The Pequits from New England area uh, being brought down to the Caribbean 
Bermuda, Bahamas, all these places, but especially Providence Island off the coast of Honduras, we don't even know about. That was a whole colony there too that the Puritans had. These crypto Puritans, yeah, crypto. What do you mean by that, Kurimeo? Crypto, well, crypto means secret. Why secret? Well, it all goes back to the uh, Sephardic Jews and the Muslim Moors. These were all people of color. The Sephardic Jews were people of color, so-called Negro, Black, dark-skinned people, right? Not how, what we think of today, you know. Uh, and these people were expelled from Portugal and Spain. They eventually, a lot of them, converted to Christianity or became Catholics only outwardly, or Christians or Puritans only outwardly. A Puritan, you're pure, right? That's not a religion, right? It's just like a title, just like Protestant, Protestant, you're Protestant. Again, these people were at war with the Catholics, not with a white man, with the Catholics, right? Crypto Puritans, remember the Puritans were seeking religious freedom. They were being persecuted, right? All these pilgrims, right? A lot of them turned out to be Sephardic Jewish, Muslim Moors people. They told us history falsely, all right? You know, Francis Drake, yeah, Francis Drake, crypto Jew, Jews and Muslims in British colonial America. Who were the real conquistadors? And who were the real so-called slaves, right? Who were the real conquistadors? Crypto Moriscos painting from colonial Mexico. They have a whole caste painting system back in Mexico. And you'll see all the different complexions being represented by Europeans, indigenous people, and other uh, tags they had, right? So-called new Christians, right? Crypto, meaning they were secret Jews still. Crypto, because they were still practicing their beliefs in secret. They were only outwardly Christian or Puritans or Protestants or Quakers or Baptists, right? And we know that to dodge the hijack when history, they try to paint all the European so-called white, you know, we know better. So dodge the hijack, you know, when you, we're reading today, don't think it's just so-called white people. All right. And um, again, the population they were put into uh, or using as free labor was the local population first. The local population. Remember, these were copper colored people, too. Yeah. America, the Atlantic Ocean was called the Ethiopian or Ethiopian Ocean. The Ethiopian. This is it. Mar de Ethiopia right on America. Yeah. Ethiopia is a dark complexion land, too. All right. Remember my video I did recently. All right, showing all those drawings, all those descriptions, primary sources, how they were picked in the American indigenous population. All right. Also, if you guys never seen my Tituba video, yeah, Tituba, the so called Salem witch, Tituba. She was actually an Arawak indigenous person who was brought and, you know, was used as a servant, brought up by this person all the way, all the way up to, um, you know, Massachusetts. Right. But she was an Arawak. And what did they tell us? They told us that this was a so-called African slave in history. That was false. All right. So we're trying to correct this again. Fair use. And remember, many times we got them, you know, doing paper genocide and naming, you know, indigenous people like the Mara Muscat here. We got the video uh, eventually becoming free people of color. Right. Free people of color or so-called Negro. Right. Or so-called black now or so-called African-American today. All right. But, you know, we know uh, better now. I also want to remind you guys, today we're going to talk about the pearls divers and what they were doing to these pearl divers. The cruelty, you know, of these uh, crypto Sephardic Morisco people that were coming down as conquistadors, right? Conquistadors and explorers, right? And doing this on behalf of the Catholics, right? And remember that the Aboriginal people of the Bahamas, for the Lucayans, were a dark-skinned race, Columbus and primary sources from Columbus himself describes them as dark complexion, as you see here, just like the Canary Islanders, dark complexion. Again, the Lucayans, dark skin race, right? The Lucayans, dark skin race. And what happened to the Lucayans again? This is from my video, Pearls in the American Aborigines. Check it out. I did drop this yesterday. The Lucayans, 40,000 of them, right? 40,000 of them, associate number. Right, the Lucayans to the number of 40,000 to slave in the mines and on the plantations of Hispaniola. Now, when those got filled up, we know they eventually ended up in Margarita Island, Venezuela, because these are very expert pearl divers. We got the whole history. So these were the actual so-called slaves that were bringing in 
to replace the population of Hispaniola, supposedly, right? It was supposed to be uh, Africans that they were re replenishing it with, and it wasn't like that. It was actually other indigenous populations, mostly. <laughs> and then the other ones we know were coming from Europe. Yeah, the Ladinos, the unwanted, the Sephardi, yeah, the prisoners of war, all that indentured servants, yeah. All right, so again, it was a more and more war dodged to hijack when we talk when we see you know them, them drawing them as light skinned because this is all dark complexion people versus dark complexion people you know it's more and more war right so i just want to remind you guys before we begin the video today and what we hear what we're about to hear we're going to hear some very important things so you can see we're going to talk about things like you know chains on people and, and jokes around their necks and people being sold or bartered for wine yeah all right, so pay attention. And, you know, this is a real history. Now, we're not talking about movies like Roots. Alex Haley got sued. Alex Haley got sued for making it up, for copywriting, uh, for plagiarizing, I'm sorry, a fictional book called The African. He had to settle out of court, right? It's a fictional story. He had to admit those were not his ancestors. He made that up. He made that up. All right. So, again, now we're going to get true history. We're starting to understand. Well, we've already gone over this a lot. This is for, mostly for the new people, and I'm glad you guys are here now. Welcome. If you're new, um, you know, we've gone over this information a lot, you know, in, in past videos. We're going to try to go over it again a little bit here and there just so we get a refresh. It's what really went down, a, a more realistic uh, perspective based on actual historical uh, sources and primary sources and all that, right? Because we know who the Portuguese and Spanish were, and we know who they were really putting under free labor or servitude or encomienda or slavery, right? All right, so I wanted to begin with this book real quick, just to correlate on another book we're going to read. Um, it says here, World's Colombian Exposition at Chicago, the Venezuela Ministerio de Relaciones or the uh, Ministry of Relations of Exterior Relations. Uh, from Venezuela, again, World's Columbian Exposition of Chicago, the United States of Venezuela in 1893. This is the name of the book. We're going to go to page 96, and it says here, I guess, chapter three, Slave Hunters in Maracapana. Now, remember, I did a video about the origin of the name America. We had that uh, word here already. When the Spanish uh, got here, there was actually a place called Amaraca or Amaruca. Amaraca, that the indigenous population had uh, towns and cities named like that, Amaraca, in South America, on the coast there. All right, so this is part of it, Mara, or Macarapana, infamous traffic, the infamous traffic of the uh, so-called uh, Indians, uh, development of New Cadiz. Remember, New Cadiz was the, the colony of Columbus Sun, right? So we're going to get into this part of the book. This is actually a coat of arms they found uh, in the water. There was a big earthquake there in 1543 that destroyed New Cadiz. It was actually erased from history, New Cadiz. And this is actually Charles V's coat of arms. This is famous. They found it there in the water and off the coast after the earthquake, you know, for after hundreds of years, they found it. All right. And it was Charles V. And we're going to read again what Charles V was doing to the indigenous population here. Now it says down here, the royal audience wished by this means to acquire correct information concerning the war with the natives. In case hostilities were decided, the commissioners were to sign a report to the effect which was to be forwarded to the sovereign who would then give orders to pursue the Indians as rebels. All right. They're declaring war on the uh, indigenous population. It would have been impossible to edict a measure more favorable to the slave dealers for the result would infallibly be war. No regular war declaration, however, was required to hunt down the Indians. The produce of the oyster fisheries had fallen off so much in 1534 that the dealers had to seek some other branch of trade in order to obtain the same profit as formerly. All right. So because remember, they had the uh, indigenous population getting the pearls. They were running out, you know. And so what they, they turned to, they started turning into slavery, right? They were using that as the trade. So they were needing, uh, you know, free laborers or so-called slaves, and that was the indigenous population they were going to use. And because of how they enslaved so many populations, destroyed so many lives there, it says here, this revenge of populations suffering from pillage, devastation, and the reduction to slavery of parents and children was but just and logical, yet it 
induce the government to take measures which only increase the evil in consequence of an act of piratry committed by Carib Indians on the coast of Margarita. In 1535, the king again decreed that the Caribs, again, who was the Caribs? I just showed you guys the pictures, right? The images, who was the Caribs? Should be reduced to bondage. Rem remember, return to Egypt or bondage. Egypt, bondage, return to bondage. They were to be considered as slaves, just as such and marked. If a marking iron was available, an annual report of the number of slaves marked was to be forwarded to the home government. All right. They're talking about iron, putting iron on people, right? Branding them, right? Marked with an iron if it was available and sending the numbers to the home government, who was again Charles the Fifth, right? Holy Roman Emperor. Carlos V, a.k.a. Charles V. All right. Let's go back. This year, the zone of the pearl fisheries was extended and fresh Spanish and Italian adventurers were to prey on the wealth extracted from the mollusk, which during centuries had quietly rested beneath the waters. Cubago was on the wane. Its pearl deposits were disappearing because the Indians, urged by the insatiable cu cupidity of the conquistadores, had ended by extirpating them, but there were still natives remaining on their athletic shoulders, on the tender arms of their children. The burning iron inscribed the deed of property according to the sentence passed by legal cupidity. All right, they were being branded. This was the state of things in Cubagua when Bensoni visited the island in 1542. We're going to get Bensoni's account right now in a different book, all right? Because it's more detailed than this little paragraph right here. So we're going to get his account soon. But this is what the, he uh, encountered, they're saying, when he arrived there in 1542. The indigenous population being treated very cruelly and put under slavery. Indians, not so-called Africans, all right? Before we go on to Bensoni, I just want to read to you what Bartolomo de las Casas had to say about the fisheries and these pearl divers, right? What they were doing to them. Now listen to this. This is very crazy. Let me see if I can zoom in. And it says, this horrible description does not stand alone. Here's the heart trending narrative of Bartolomé de las Casas. Hardly had the Indian pearl fisheries issued from the water with a supply of oysters when their masters forced them to dive again without allowing them to recruit their strength and draw breath. They were like, no, go back down. They were making them go back down. They couldn't, they hadn't even catch their breath. If, if through sheer necessity, the Indian remained above water a few minutes, the master whipped, all right, obliged him to dive again. Nearly all the slaves thus employed died in a short time. They were fed on the remains of oysters. Occasionally, they got some cassavi bread, but they never received any wine or strengthening liquor to restore their weakened bodies, which had become covered with scales through the continual contact of salt water. So these people got scales in their skin now. At night, these poor creatures were confined in stocks and loaded with chains so as to procure any possibility of escaping. At dawn, their dreary round of work again began. Many disappeared, devoured by sharks. Devoured by sharks, others would faint away or vomit blood. Most of them died of hunger, cruel treatment, and despair. All right, that's from Bartolomo de las Casas, primary source. This is a picture unequaled by any of Dante's Inferno. Human beings like unto spectres, covered with scales, with shoulders furrowed by the whip, ulcerated, dying of hunger, alternately plunging into the rising from the waters, bearing to their implicable tormentors the prices they had wrested from the bosom of the seas. And again, who are we talking about? Again, these are some caribs, right? These are some other caribs right here. All right, more caribs. Who are we talking about when they're talking about, you know, doing this to people? So-called Indians. All right, carib woman right here. All right, carib from St. Vincent down here. More caribs from Dominica. Who's the caribs, right? And again, who else were, were they using? Who did they send to dive? Right? Lucayans, right? Lucayans, dark-skinned people, Lucayans. They were the ones. So Caribs and Lucayans and Arawaks, any people that were there and any other populations that were being used, even from Panama, even from North America, and, you know, as so-called slaves, 
even from Peru, even from other parts like Brazil, they were bringing them there, you know, and that's that's who they were using. And these are the people that they were just describing with scales and all that bad treatment. This infamous and never ending traffic, this continual assassination of defenseless populations, which were to disappear like the inhabitants of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico, this Holocaust of victims of the lash, slavery, hunger, and want of sleep did not satisfy the greed of the conquistadors. Again, who's these conquistadors? The oyster beds and the inhabitants of the Venezuelan shores and islands had ceased to exist. The last of the natives had witnessed his sisters dishonored and his family ruthlessly sacrificed. And that's what I wanted to show you, read to you, you know, this account from Bartolomé de las Casas regarding and correlating what we read about, right? Learned about just yesterday about the pearls, right? And how they were using the American Indians, right? Eventually in history, they became so-called just slaves or in or blacks, right? Or so-called Africans, right? But they were uh, indigenous populations, all right? So now we're going to go to another book. Again, we're going to get Bensoni's um, version of what he saw. When he got there, we just got De Las Casas, primary source. Now we're going to get another uh, primary source, Bensoni. With the book, uh, which is called Spanish and Portuguese South America during the colonial period by Robert Grant Watson. It says editor of Maury's Handbook of Greece, fourth edition, and also uh, author of a book called The History of Persia. So he's very uh, popular in, in these, with these historical books, right? Uh, a scholarly source. The Italian traveler Benzoni, who had been referred to in the preceding pages, has been quoted by Robertson Irvin and helps, but considering the unique position which he holds as being the first foreign critic of the proceedings of the Spaniards in South America. I scarcely think that his volume has received the full attention which it deserves at the hands of modern writers on Spanish South America. I would therefore draw attention to some extracts from his work, begging the reader to bear in mind that they proceed by no means from a man of the mold of Las Casas, but from one who by his own confession took part in a slave hunting expedition. All right, so they're saying, all right, we're gonna read this account from this person. He ain't no angel like Las Casas. That's what they're saying. He actually was a slaver. All right, it says the author in question was nevertheless as he states a devout christian so even though he was enslaving american indians because that's what we're talking about here not africans the author in question it says was nevertheless a devout christian and he dedicates his history of the new world to pope heels the fourth all right so it says bensoni all right remember the, the slaver started for america in the year 1541 and there spent 14 years of toil and travel, landing at the Gulf of Paria. All right, this is in uh, South America, I believe, close to Venezuela or in Venezuela today. He proceeded to Cuba and other islands, returning thence to Acla. When he crossed to Panama, from which place he visited the Kingdom of Peru, the Kingdom of Peru. In this wandering course, he passed 14 years. Benzoni is the author who is originally responsible for the well-known story of Columbus and the egg. He states that while whilst at Amaracapana, all right, let me take that off so you can see that. Amaracapana. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit. It's a little better, right? I want you guys to see this. So Amaracapana. So while he was at Amaracapana, this is in South America, it says, he states that Whilst at Amaracapana, Amaracapana, Captain Callis arrived with upwards of 4,000 slaves, 4,000 slaves, and had captured many more. When some of them could not walk, the Spaniards, to prevent their remaining behind to make war, killed them by burying their swords in their sides of their breast. So when they couldn't uh, survive these uh, slaves they had, they would just kill them so they wouldn't you know make make delays or, or stay behind or anything like that all right it was really a most distressing thing to see the way in which these wretched creatures naked tired and lame were treated exhausted with hunger sick and despairing the unfortunate mothers with two and three children on their shoulders or clinging around their necks overwhelmed with tears and grief 
all tied with cords or with iron chains around their necks or their arms or their hands. Nor was there a girl but had been violated by the depredators. Oh man, they were even violating the girls. At page 159, Bensoni observes that Spaniards have eulogized themselves too much when they tell us that they are worthy of great praise for having converted to Christianity the tribes and nations that they subjugated. All right, so we're talking about these tribes and nations, all right? For there is great difference between the name and the being one in reality. All right, so even though they were bolstering themselves, talking about we were evangelizing them and making them civilized and Christian, all right, they were covering the, you know, the cruelties, atrocities that they were committing. All right, with that. It says the slaves, all right, this is quotes. Somebody's saying this, all right, it says the slaves are all marked in the face and on the arms by a hot iron with the mark of C. Then the governors and captains do as they like with them. Some are given to the soldiers so that the Spaniards afterwards sell them or gamble them away amongst each other. When ships arrive from Spain, they barter these Indians for wine. Who? Who? The Indians. All right. So let's go back. Let's go back. All right. I want you to understand what's going on here. All right. Because it says that Benzoni, right? Remember? He arrived at where? At Amaracapana. There was already a place called Amaracapana in South America. All right. He arrived with what? With 4,000 slaves, it says, right? Now we go back. Who were these slaves? These were Indians, right? So when ships would arrive there, what they would do from Spain? They would barter these Indians for wine, flour, biscuit, and other requisite things. And even when some of the Indian women are pregnant by the same Spaniards, they sell them without any conscience. Then the merchants carry them elsewhere. They carry them elsewhere. They take them to the other side, reverse, and sell them again, and sell them again. Others are sent to the island of Hispaniola. All right, so once they leave their mainland, their indigenous land, and they travel to these other places, right? These servants and slaves that they capture, these indigenous people, they put in captivity, prisoners of war. They would call them Negroes from there. You understand? Filing with them, filling with them some large vessels built like caravels, all right? Filling the vessels, right? Filling with what? With Indians, not Africans, Indians, and supplying what? Hispaniola. Because why? They had already um, decimated most of the population of Hispaniola through the same kind of slavery, sending them elsewhere uh, with their diseases, a lot of suicides, a lot of cruelties was going on, so the population would decrease fast. They, would, they were, you know, I mean, we're not saying you went extinct, of course not, but they had to replenish the slave population, all right, and they did it with the other indigenous people. All right, so it says they carry them under the deck and being nearly all people captured inland, they suffer severely the sea horrors and not being allowed to move out of those sinks. What with their sickness and their other ones, they have to stand in the field like animals and the sea often being calm, water and other provisions fail them so that the poor wretches oppressed by the heat, the stench, the thirst and the crowded miserably expire there below. All right, we're talking about American Indians that are experiencing this cruelty. All right, we're talking about Deuteronomy 28. And you know, this is untold uh, truth of ancient America, right? And you know, but you see how this correlates what we've learning in the other series, right? Who was getting enslaved by the Spanish? The Indians, right? It's another account right here. Letting you know straight up, look what they went through in these ships, all right? Now, all that country around the Gulf of Paria and other places are no longer inhabited by Spaniards. Finally, out of the two million of original inhabitants of Hispaniola, through the number of suicides and other deaths occasioned by the oppressive labor and cruelties imposed by the Spaniards, there are not a hundred and fifty now to be found, and this has been their way of making Christians out of them. What befell these poor islanders has happened also to all the other others around. Cuba, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, and other places. And although an almost infinite number of the inhabitants of the mainland have been brought to these islands as slaves, they have nearly all since died. 
and it says the initial letter of the Emperor Charles V. All right. So who was saying this? Who was describing this? Charles V. And what were they putting on their in their uh, face and in their arms? With a hard iron, a mark of C for Charles V. C for Charles V. All right. Charles V. Do you understand what he looked like? He was another brother, couple colored, so-called Negro. This is just another more on more war. All right. 